What's going on guys, it is Pangino here and in this video we're going to be focusing on advanced techniques, optimizations and tweaks in which you can apply to almost any system, whether it be high end, low end, old, new, Windows 10 or Windows 11 to increase FPS in practically all games you play. Now this is the FPS guide companion video which I'll be linking in most of my future FPS guides which will be focusing more on settings. So you can find the individual in-game settings in those videos and for those of you looking for more advanced features, tweaks and optimizations, you can jump into this video to find all of the advanced settings and optimizations which won't be covered in those videos, with all of that and more coming straight after a message from today's video sponsor. Tired of seeing the Activate Windows watermark, built a new PC, or just want to own Windows at a major discount, head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows 10, 11, Home, or Pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout, where you can use a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of Windows, and boom, you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. Adjusting your system power plan is essential for ensuring that you're getting the best performance possible out of your system or tailoring it towards a cooler, quieter, better battery life if you're on a laptop. Navigate to the bottom left, type power space plan. Select edit power plan, head up to the navigation bar at the top, select power options. Navigate down to show additional plans. Right off the bat, if you want the simplest option and best performance possible, go with the high performance power plan. You can select this by navigating to the small dot to the left of it and clicking. Once it's been selected, that power plan has then been applied. You can also look into reducing the load on our CPU when both the system starts and background processes which always run. Navigating to the bottom right, selecting the task icon tray. Start by closing out of any and all game launches which are open for games you aren't playing. To piggyback on that step and to stop it happening in the future, press control, shift and escape on your keyboard at the same time. Inside of task manager you might have to go to show more details at the bottom left, then head up to the startup tab. Inside of this section, select your desired program, go to the bottom right, select disable. Again, don't do this for every app, only do this for applications you are confident you don't need, booting automatically with your system. Next up is a fix for those of you running on a Chromium based web browser which is more than likely going to be most of you watching this video. Boot into your browser, head up to the top right hand side to the three dots, then navigate down to settings. Inside of this menu, scroll down on the left hand side until you find system. Make sure that continue running background apps when Chrome is closed is switched to off. This will stop any extensions running which you may have attached to Google Chrome running when the application is closed. For those of you that use Discord, navigate inside of the application, head to the bottom left, select user settings. Start by navigating down on the left hand side until you find the advanced section. Inside of here you'll have the option for hardware acceleration. Turning off hardware acceleration could improve performance and latency on many games depending on which hardware you are running. If you're running on an older or weaker CPU with fewer cores I would recommend keeping this option on as it may cause discord lag switching this off. For those of you running on a Windows 11 system an essential setting I would recommend at least trying out is to navigate to the bottom left hand side typing in core space isolation. Selecting the core isolation setting, navigating down to memory integrity. Now this setting is going to be completely up to you if you want to enable this or disable this. By default this should be automatically enabled and this in some cases and on some games and some hardware can eat away at your FPS reducing performance across the board in many games you play. Now if you are looking for the best performance possible and you are confident in your system and your security then this could be a great option to ensure that you're getting the best performance possible by switching this to the off position but it's completely up to you. If you are experiencing some level of Windows issues you can actually run a a quick windows scan to verify all windows data make sure everything's there if you run into any damaged files those will be repaired navigate to the bottom left hand side type cmd right click run as admin select yes this time in cmd you're going to be typing in sfc spacebar slash scan now all one word. Then press enter. The scan should then start up. Shouldn't really take any more than five or 10 minutes. Let it run its course and it will automatically fix any errors if it does detect them. At this point, we are going to be jumping into some more advanced optimizations, which many of you will want to follow along with, but to make it simple and easy for you to revert all of the next features within a few clicks of a button, we're going to set up a system restore point. It takes a couple of seconds and I highly recommend you do this. Navigate to the bottom left, type restore, select create a system restore point, scroll down, select your local disk C drive, select configure, turn on system protection at the top, set maximum usage to about 5%. Select C drive once again, create, name the system restore point. I'm just going to be calling this advanced. Anything we change or adjust after this point in the video can be reverted back at any time after we're done. For those of you on desktop systems pursuing the best performance possible, it's also recommended to disable the hibernation mode built into Windows. If you are going to be stepping away from your PC for a while, it's best to just shut the PC down, turn it off completely. To disable this, click on the Windows button, type CMD. Right click on CMD, select run as admin. Once again, in the description down below, you should be able to find the hibernation command to copy and paste. Right click and select copy. Go into CMD, pick control and V on your keyboard to paste. Once that's pasted, press enter. If you want to re-enable hibernate, change off 
to on, copy the same command, paste it into CMD, and that will re-enable the hibernation mode. Next up, we're going to be using ISLC or Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. For this, you can do a simple Google search or head over to this website. Find the latest version of ISLC available, scroll down to official download here. Open the exe, select the three dots, select desktop, OK. Extract, go inside of the ISLC folder. Click on the ISLC EXE, run as admin. Select yes. Start off, make sure the first box is set to 1024. The second box needs to be set to roughly half of our system RAM. You can see this at the top left. For me, I have 32,000. Roughly half of that is going to be 16,000. Go to the bottom right hand side to ISLC polling rate. For slower or lower end systems, go with 1000. Otherwise, go with 500. Go to wanted time resolution on the right hand side. Remove everything with inside of here. Set this to 0 0.50, then use your delete key to remove the extra values. Once completed, select enable custom time resolution, select purge standby list to clear that, and go to the bottom right to start. You can then minimize the application and leave it running in the background. I'd recommend doing that every single time you go to play some of your favorite games, or if you're about to start a long gaming session, hit start on ISLC, leave it running in the background, it will clear your system standby list, reducing micro stuttering and hitching issues you could experience when playing games for a long period of time, and will lower the Windows time resolution, resulting in better input latency and better performance. This swiftly moves us over to the GPU optimization section of this video. A few of the optimizations we're about to cover have been covered on the channel already in further detail, so if you'd like to see specific videos about some of the optimizations we're about to cover, you can find those linked in the description down below. To start off with the GPU optimization section, I'm quickly going to recommend two videos I highly suggest you take the time to watch, either now or later on after this video. On the left hand side you have the DDU or Display Driver Uninstaller Guide which will show you how to do a clean installation of GPU drivers. Not only do you get the benefits of removing the older drivers and installing a clean one, but this is typically one of the most effective troubleshooting steps in which you can do if you're experiencing low performance in certain games, game crashes, or just GPU issues which you just can't explain. For those of you running on an NVIDIA driver, it is also highly recommended to de-bloat your NVIDIA driver. It's quick, simple, and easy to do. There is a ton of customization with inside of that, and there are tons of performance optimizations which come from installing a customized de-bloated driver. So regardless if you use DDU and installed a de-bloated driver or not, at the very minimum, I would at least suggest updating to the latest GPU driver, whether you're running on an AMD Radeon GPU or an NVIDIA GPU. For the basic settings you need to know inside of the MD Radeon software is to navigate over to your gaming tab. But first of all, we're going to start off with global graphics. Radeon Super Resolution is something in which I would highly recommend enabling, as this works similarly to AMD's FSR or NVIDIA's DLSS tech. It's not as smart, so it won't look as good as those options, but it will allow you to apply FSR to any game, whether the game supports it or not. In most cases, I would recommend giving this a shot and turning this on. Radeon Anti-Lag I would not recommend using in any circumstance. It's slightly problematic, can cause stuttering issues, it works well when it does work, but it's such a game specific setting, I would recommend switching this off. Radeon Chill off, Radeon Boost off. If you aren't looking to use Radeon Super Resolution, but you have the option for Radeon Image Sharpening, this can be good if you're not looking to improve GPU performance, but you're looking to get the best visuals possible. You can't use both settings at once, so think of Radeon Image Sharpening as a way to get your games to look better, and Radeon Super Resolution as a way to get your games to run better. Texture filtering quality, we're going to be setting this to performance. Surface format optimization, on. Tessellation mode, AMD optimized, OpenGL triple buffering, off. One of the most important things you can do for your GPU is to set your own custom fan curve. This is the speed in which the GPU fans are at, depending on the temperature of your GPU. In many cases, this will also allow your GPU to boost higher, maintaining better performance for longer, keeping the GPU cooler. It's a win-win-win situation, just with a few seconds of tweaking your fan curve. For those of you on any NVIDIA GPU or an older AMD Radeon GPU, I would highly recommend that you use MSI Afterburner for this, which can be found linked in the description down below or on screen now. Once the program has been installed and open up, it could look slightly different to mine. Just find the settings button located on your program regardless of how it looks. Head over to the right hand side to user interface. I then recommend setting the MSI Cyborg Afterburner Skin white. Select that, select apply, select OK. Navigate down to the settings button once again. Head over to fan, enable user defined software control. At the bottom we have the temperature of the GPU and on the left hand side we have the fan speed corresponding to that temperature. So for me on my current fan curve we're using 50% fan speed at 50 degrees. If the GPU goes higher than this and gets to 60 degrees, then I'm going to be using 100% of my fan speed. You can set it so your maximum fan speed is 80%. You can set this graph however you would like to. Once that's set up, go down to the bottom, select apply and OK. 
You then need to select the button for auto on the fan speed so you can't adjust this inside of MSI and the option is blanked out. Once that's been selected, go to the bottom, select apply. Once that's done, your custom GPU fan curve is set up and running. Alternatively, if you're running on an RX 5000, 6000 or 7000 series GPU or newer from AMD, you're more than likely going to want to do this in the Radeon software panel. Head up to performance, we're then going to navigate down to custom tuning on the right hand side, select I accept. We're then going to proceed to scroll down to fan tuning, turning this on, advanced fan control, enable. Here you'll have a basic fan curve. At the bottom we have the GPU temperature and on the left hand side we have the percentage the fans are going to be running at depending on what temperature. So as you can see by default the normal fan curve for this Radeon GPU is running at 100% fan speed at roughly 90 degrees. I want my GPU to roughly be at 100% fan speed at about 65 to 70 degrees so I'm going to drag that up there. I'm happy with this. I'm then going to press apply changes. If you wanted a quieter GPU which ran a little bit hotter that's completely fine. You could drag down your curve to stay really slow, go to the top right to save profile, hit desktop, name the profile, hit save. Whenever you want to load it, press the load button, scroll down, select the profile, select open, and it will then be good to go and applied. On many GPUs, you can typically unlock more performance out of a GPU with one simple setting inside of this program. This is outside of typical overclocking, undervolting, or doing any tedious adjusting for your GPU. With this one setting, we can just allow the GPU to stretch its legs further, which will be benefited nicely with our custom GPU fan curve, keeping the GPU running cooler. I always like to run my Nvidia card as high as I can set them for the power limit inside of MSI Afterburner. All modern GPUs are BIOS locked to the point where you can't apply settings to them that are going to damage them. They simply will not work outside of the spec and you can't even adjust them to work outside of the spec. So by raising your power limit, you're simply allowing the GPU to further stretch its legs. Once that's set, go to the bottom, select apply. Next up, we have BIOS optimizations. BIOS optimizations are essential to ensure that you're getting the best performance possible, especially in CPU heavy games. This isn't going to be an outright guide as to what settings you should be applying in your BIOS. It's more going to be guidance of what settings you should go away, research to see what's best for your platform and your CPU, what settings are even available to you, and what I'd recommend looking into. It's nearly always recommended for those of you playing esports titles or battle royale or other heavy CPU games to set an all core overclock rather than using boost algorithms such as AMD's PBO or Intel's Turbo Boost. They slightly reduce your single threaded performance but your multi threaded performance will see a hefty increase which these games prefer. You could also look into a CPU undervolt which will optimize the voltage being delivered to the CPU to maximize its efficiency, which will lower the temperature of the CPU, allowing the CPU to run faster for longer as it's not hitting temperature limits or power limits. We're just scraping the surface with CPU undervolting, but for an example, the benchmarks in which you are seeing on screen now feature my Ryzen 5800X3D. You can see the wattage being used and the CPU clocks being achieved and FPS from that compared to stock settings where we're not running an undervolt and we're just allowing the CPU to behave as it normally would. Ensure that you are utilizing your XMP, DOCP or EXP memory profiles for your RAM kit in which you have installed. These profiles are essential to have set to on to get the speeds for the RAM in which you have paid good money for. If you're someone that wants to scrape every ounce of performance out of their system as possible, you could also look into manually tuning your RAM timings, which is essential to be getting the best performance possible out of CPU heavy games or esports titles. If you're running on an AMD Ryzen system, it's also essential to ensure that you're setting your infinity fabric clock or F clock in your BIOS to half of the memory speed in which you're running. For instance, if you are using a 3200 megahertz RAM kit, find your F clock or Infinity Fabric and set this to 1600 as this is half. For those of you on Nvidia GPUs, navigate inside of your desktop, right click, open up the Nvidia control panel. First of all, starting off by going to the top left hand side to adjust image settings with preview. Make sure the middle option titled use the advanced 3D image settings has been selected, then go to the bottom right and select apply. Navigate over to manage 3D settings. Starting off with image scaling or Nvidia image scaling, also known as NIS. NIS is a fantastic option in which you can enable, which will allow you to upscale lower resolutions, similar to Nvidia's DLSS or AMD's FSR technology, but at a driver level, meaning that you can apply this to every game you play, not just games that have FSR or DLSS. First, we'll need to go to image scaling, turn this to the on position. Set the sharpen factor to anything you wish to do so. I recommend enabling the overlay indicator to see if NIS is working. With that applied, head into one of your favorite games that doesn't support FSR or DLSS. In the top left hand side, if you have turned the indicator on, you'll see a blue NIS logo, indicating that it's ready to be used but we're not currently using NIS. Go into the in-game settings, go to the resolution option, change it to anything lower than your monitor's typical or native resolution, apply that resolution, NIS logo will turn to green, showing me that NIS is working, and we're now upscaling that lower end resolution, getting a hefty FPS bump.
bump, I could set this all the way down to 720p on my 4K monitor. It's not going to look good at all, but you can find what resolution suits you best. Next up for the important settings is low latency mode. In nearly all cases, I would at least recommend switching this to the on position. Scrolling down to preferred refresh rate. If you're not planning on utilizing G-Sync, I'd recommend setting this to the highest available. Last but not least, navigating down to texture filtering quality, setting this to either performance or high performance. Another tab I'd like to make use of in the NVIDIA control panel is the adjust desktop color settings, selecting the monitor you would like to change the color settings for, and navigating down to digital vibrance. This won't help you out much if you're looking for color accuracy, but if you're looking for more vibrant colors, especially if you play a lot of esports titles, or you just like punchier colors on your monitor, once that's set up and out of the way, press apply and we're done. We can now move over to registry optimizations. We're also going to be backing up the Windows registry manually before making any changes. So this will allow you to go back and reset your registry manually at any time. And if you don't decide they're for you and you want to change everything back, you can do so with just two clicks of a button. We can then navigate to the bottom left and type in reg edit, just like so. Quickly going to be making a backup of our current registry. So all you need to do is go to the top left hand side, go to file, export, go to desktop or wherever you want to save your registry. And we'll just call this reg backup. Once it's named, select save. This will more than likely take a few moments. If you head over to your desktop, you should then be able to find the reg backup dot reg registry file. To revert everything, you'll just simply double click on this registry file, select yes, then select yes. After a few short moments, everything will be changed back to how it is at this point in the video, and you'll then be good to go. We're first of all going to be deleting and clearing out excess startup applications, which automatically boot whenever you log into Windows, slowing down the PC. If you do need to use any of these applications after you boot the PC, you can simply just search for them on your PC and boot them normally. It just stops them opening automatically. Automatically. So navigate down to the first registry directory, current version slash run, right click, select copy. Inside of the Windows registry editor, go up to the direction bar at the top, remove everything, then press Ctrl and V to paste and press enter. Inside of this section, you'll find all of the applications which will boot with your PC. Any applications you know you don't need or are not required, simply select the application, right click, and select delete. Just remember anything you're not sure about, leave it alone. Everything you know you don't need anymore, delete. Find the next Windows registry directory, which is the same command, but in a different location. Once that's been copied, go to the top, hit Ctrl and V to paste and press run once again. Here I have a bunch more applications that I'm going to be going through and just selecting delete on. Once you've cleared that out, fantastic. Navigate inside of the description down below once again, find the next registry directory, right click, select copy, press Ctrl and V, and paste. Inside of here, start off with system responsiveness. We're going to be changing this to one, select okay. Next up is network throttling index, double clicking. We're going to be setting this to eight Fs. So find the F key, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Select OK. On the left hand side, we're going to scroll down to System Profile, Tasks, Games. Inside of this section, we're going to be setting our GPU priority to 8, selecting OK. Our priority is going to be set to 6, OK. Scheduling category is going to be set to high, which is H I G H. And SFIO priority is also going to be set to high, select OK. With that completed, go back inside of the description down below, this time to the H key current user software Microsoft Game Bar section. Right click, select Copy. Go to the top. Remove the directory, Control and V, paste. Inside of Game Bar, if you don't see a key for Allow Auto Game Mode, we'll need to create one. Right click in the blank space on the right hand side, select New, D Word 32 bit value. We're then going to be calling this Allow Auto Game Mode. Press Enter. Double click on this. We're then going to set the value to zero. Select OK, and it should look just like this. Next up, navigating down in the description, this time to Allow Game DVR. Right click, select Copy. Go to the navigation bar, Control and V once again paste. This time navigating over to allow game DVR, finding the value key, double clicking, setting this to zero, selecting OK. Next up navigating in the description down below, this time to game config store, right clicking, selecting copy. Going up to the navigation bar once again, hitting Ctrl and V, enter. First of all starting off with DXGI, double clicking on this top key, setting this to a value of one. Next up is EFSE, feature flags, double clicking, setting this to zero. Game DVR underscore enable is going to be changed to zero, selecting OK. Game DVR underscore FSE behavior mode is going to be set to two. Honor user FSE behavior mode is going to be set to zero. Once those have been set up exactly like I've shown, we then need to navigate on the left hand side to where it says game config store. Find this folder in the game config store, right click and select delete. Select yes. We're then going to do that for the second folder with inside of it, titled parents, right clicking, selecting delete. And that's it for the Windows registry optimizations. Remember, if you do want to change everything back to how it was in your Windows registry, you'll just simply use that reg backup you created for yourself earlier in your desktop by double clicking and following the options on screen. Doing a system restart and your Windows registry will be reverted completely back to stock. We're also going to be applying some optimizations to the Windows command 
command prompt to help stabilize FPS and lower latency on our systems. For this, navigate to the bottom left hand side, type CMD, right click on command prompt, select run as admin. You can navigate inside of the description down below where we can find our first CMD command to copy, which will be BCD edit, disable dynamic tick, yes. Select copy on this in the description, go into the CMD, hit control and V to paste, press enter. Navigate down to use platform tick for the next command, right click the whole command, go into CMD, hit control and V, Enter. Let me know of your results and which games you've tested this on in that comment section down below, alongside any other tips, tricks, or optimizations you'd like to share, as it's always fantastic to get a discussion going on down there. If you have enjoyed this content and would like to get more out of your PC without spending a penny, consider checking out the two videos on screen now.